United Nations people on the north side were the Chinese and there's probably two miles across that valley. And uh, so a couple times a week or once these small patrols were sent out just to kind of probe and see what was going on. And we had this big Mormon medic. He was a giant. He was like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, maybe 260. And, and he was a conscientious object, objector, didn't want to fire a rifle, but he was a very heroic person because the medics carried no weapon yeah, and they were right. right there with him. Right. He carried a stretcher. Well, he had to go out on every one of these patrols. Well, if we had 140 men in our company and you only send out seven or eight, well, your chat, you know, you only had to go out on one every seven, eight times mm -hmm. or more. So, uh, and it was customary, they'd go out at night and they were supposed to be back in by daylight. Well, as it approached daylight this morning, <clears throat> uh, we started hearing small arms fire and the patrol had run into some Chinese and one of the guys were wounded. <clears throat> and uh, we were, Porkchop Hill is up high and so we could look down into the valley and the side of the hill, we call them fingers that run down from the hill. And uh, so as we looked down there, here was this medic with the guy, one guy that was wounded. And of course he can't carry the, this guy on his stretcher. He's got him laying on the stretcher. And uh, the other guys were busy engaged in, in small arms fire with the Chinese. And so it's kind of like watching a movie. You could sit up there and watch what's taking place mm. right down a few hundred yards below you. And Buck, without any uh, instruction from anybody, I'm sitting there and I hadn't been there long. So I'm a rookie, I'm yeah. a private. Right, yeah. And in the service, anyone who has one stripe more than you do, you do what they're told of. Well, I'm sitting watching and all of a sudden somebody slaps me on the shoulder and it's Buck. He says, let's go. And he put his weapon down in the trench beside it, jumped over the edge and started running down this hill towards this wounded guy and the medic. And uh, of course, I didn't know. The guy told me, let's go, yeah. so I'd jump out and follow him. Well, we probably set a record for running down that <laughs> hill in combat boots. By the time we got down there, the medic had this guy on the stretcher, and he grabbed the foot end of it, which is lighter, of course, because a person's body mm -hmm. is... Mm -hmm. And Buck and I each grabbed one of the handles on the front of the stretcher, and we set a record probably getting back up that hill as well. And uh, uh, we got back in unscathed. There, there were a few rounds fired in our direction. And here's a private first class who, on his own uh, ingenuity and, and, and good sense, caused this wounded guy to be back in the trenches safely yeah. before the company commander and the officer could formulate a plan to decide what to do. Yeah. And yet there was no decoration for that. I, you know, as soon as we were back, it was just another day, at, uh, another day at the ranch, so to speak. And there's no high fives or a big thing. It was just that was a part of the, mm. the day. And that's the reason that I feel so strongly about the combat infantryman's bad. Because I was fortunate enough to have been singled out and received this commendation, but there are thousands of people who did things like Buck did. Right. Spur of the moment, do what's needed, no fanfare, and no one ever knows about it because when all hell breaks loose, you know, there aren't a lot of people standing around there with a pad Taking and notes. pencil recording <laughs> what people do in the line of heroic action. So to me, if a man, and at that time there's only men in the yeah. service, if a man is wearing the combat infantryman's badge, he's got my respect. Wow, wow. Utmost respect. Yeah, yeah. 
Mm. Because he probably did dozens of heroic acts that were never recorded. Yeah. And the other side of it is, you know, a lot of the people who saw the things that he did, who might have talked about it after, never made it. You mm. know, I mean, yeah. so uh, who's, who are the witnesses? Were there any witnesses? Right, and, right. And so, uh, uh, to me, uh, there's nothing as meaningful 